You're probably watching this video because I've replied to one of your comments on my videos with it, or because you want to learn how to fix your bugs faster. Now unfortunately, bugs are just something that you will come across sooner or later in Roblox Studio, and it's not something that you'll be able to avoid. Learning to script is one thing, but learning how to fix bugs is another, and that's the most important part, in my opinion. A lot of people will come across a bug after watching one of my videos, or when they're writing their own code, and they'll think to themselves that they aren't capable of fixing it, and that the whole code is broken, and there's no chance of being able to fix it, and they will give up straight away. Now, I am a human, not a machine, and outside of my Roblox videos, I have other things to do in my life, such as making my own games. And currently, I've got 186,000 subscribers. So on average, I get 743 comments per day. That's from my YouTube analytics. So 743 questions in, com in comments every single day. So assuming that at least 40% of them are comments asking for help and not people saying, you know, thank you or whatever. Because trust me, it's, it's a bigger number than 40%, uh, the actual help questions. But assuming that 40% are comments of people asking for help. Um, that's 296 comments and problems which I would have to look into every single day. And so if we assume that each problem would take me at least five minutes to solve, and it usually takes a lot longer to solve them, that's 1,480 minutes of my time, which is 24.6 hours. And guess what? That's longer than a day. And I'm asleep for at least half of that, so it's mathematically impossible for me to answer everyone's comments. And that's forgetting everything else I do in my day, so you can't rely on me to fix your problems. And my channel is only going to grow larger, so that's more comments and problems that I'm just not able to look into. I'm really sad when I see people give up straight away, because I think of the opportunity that they've just wasted. It could have been a bug that was easily fixable, that they just didn't notice because they didn't have the time or didn't take the time to debug it. And if they had, they might have stuck with Roblox scripting and they could have become a successful developer. Think about it. Imagine all of the bugs that I and all of the other Roblox developers out there whose games you play have had to solve. We're here today and you're playing our games because we've not given up. Because we know that every bug is solvable if we put our minds to it. That's my motto. There's no such thing as an unsuch thing as an unsolvable bug. Because if we can't solve it, then we can enlist the help of others. And if they can't solve it, well then we'll just rewrite the code in a better way. I want you to be that person who doesn't give up at the first hurdle. Because there are going to be some people watching this video who don't take my advice, who don't um, decide to learn how to fix their bugs, they don't put the time in, and they won't be the ones that become a successful Roblox developer, and I want you to become a successful Roblox developer. There are going to be winners and there are going to be losers, and the losers are the ones who think to themselves that the bugs are bigger than them, and they're going to let them get the better of them. But the winners are the ones who are going to learn to debug learn to solve their problems, and this is what makes them successful, because they know that no bug will be able to stop them on their path to becoming a successful Roblox developer. And yes, of course, debugging can be a real pain, but it is part and parcel of being a scripter. It's just something that you have to accept and get on with. So, what's the best way to fix your code easily and quickly? Well, the first thing to do when you realise that your script isn't working properly is to check the output window. When your script doesn't work as intended, it might have printed out an error message automatically to your output window. These messages tell you where the script stopped working and why. Sometimes these messages can be a little bit vague, but they can give you a lot of clues as to what is working, such as telling you the specific script and line number where the error occurred. So read this error message carefully. Then go to your script, to your script and look up the line the error message told you about. If you have a function, then sometimes multiple code lines will be printed in your error because it's telling us where the function, where in the function the script broke, but also the line where that function was called from originally. If you still don't understand the error, try googling it. There are going to be lots of others who have had the same error message as you pop up, but of course they won't have had the same code as you, so it might be a little bit different. Usually though, you should find some useful information on how to fix it, because most error messages are quite generalised, and it's due to something such as a spelling mistake. You can, also, you can also post on forums, such as the Roblox Developer Forum. If you don't have access to that, search on the forum for your error and see if anybody else has posted about it before. It's likely that they have. And uh, you can also try other forums online, as well as just searching on Google, as I said. Most of the time, errors happen when you've forgotten to write something in your code, or if you've made a typo or a spelling mistake. 
However, it is possible that your script could break without printing an error message, and this is where your debugging skills really come into play. Your script could be written completely error-free and without any mistakes, but it still might not work. A real-life example of this is if you were coding your own physical coffee machine. You could have scripted it to do everything correctly, but if there's no coffee granules or water in the machine, it's not going to be able to make your coffee. You might be wondering why your coffee machine doesn't work and doing all sorts of checks in your system code until you realize that there's no coffee or water inside and you have to just refill it. You might be looking at all sorts of things for a while before you realize your silly mistake. Now obviously that's a physical um, analogy but you can see where it applies to Roblox scripting as well. When you have these types of bugs in your code that don't show any error messages, it's useful to write print statements on different lines to see how, co how far your code is getting before it doesn't do what's intended. Sometimes you might think it's a bug, but it's because one of your if statements isn't executing the code because your condition that you've put inside of it might be wrong or written incorrectly. So for example, if you're checking to see if a number is bigger than um, five, but you've used the wrong uh, operator. So it's actually checking if it's less than five, but you only realize that when you check over your code and see that you put the wrong operator in. It's not an error, it's not going to print an error message, you're just checking for the wrong thing. So that's why it's a good idea to use print statements, because if you write prints on each line, then you'll see that the code inside the if statement wouldn't print out. So you know that it's something to do with that if statement condition. It helps to narrow down your focus so you, you know where to look. Now, breakpoints are also useful because they allow you to stop your code at a certain point before the next line uh, executes and then you can also then choose to execute the next line and pause before you then execute the next line so you can see what's happening. It allows you to stop your code at a certain point so that you can review what's going on. You just have to keep looking over your code and think logically. Imagine that you're the script running from the top going down and go line by line to figure out what it's doing and where it might be going wrong. I do this all the time and it's a useful way of working out what went wrong. So we're going to go through some examples now, which I've got a friend of mine to write some code with some bugs in, so I don't know what the bugs are. And we're going to go through it together and fix the code. So you can learn how I debug. Okay, as I said, I've got my friend Neko88 to write this code. He hasn't told me what the bugs are, but this code should add up numbers in a list. So all of these numbers inside of this table, they should be added up and we'll print out the total at the end. So. Let's run it and see if it works. It should print out the total and it prints out 55. But if we add up the numbers ourselves, one add four, add eight, add three, add six, add 12, add five, add seven, add three, add two, you'll see that it's actually 51. So we've gone wrong somewhere. So let's try and work out what's happened here. So firstly, the total is zero as we go into the code. Then we're going to jump into this for loop. So it's going to loop through every um, number in the table. So n is going to be the index number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because it's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth um, item in the table. And the c is going to be its value. So the 1, the 4, the 8, the 3, the 6. So it's going to loop through the table. That looks good. And then it's going to get the value of the total. And it's going to set its value to being the current total add n. Okay, I found the bug already. So you can see what it's doing is it's adding the index number. So the first one, the first index number is going to be one. So it's going to add one to the total. Then it's going to add the second index number, which should, which will be two. So we don't want to add up two. We want to add the four. We want to add the values of the numbers in the table. So we need to change it from n to c. And you can see how it didn't print out an error message there. It printed out 55 because it added up all the table indexes. So if you were to add up, let's have a look here. 1, add 2, add 3, add 4, add 5, add 6, add 7, add 8, add 9, add 10, add 11. Oops, sorry, my bad. There's only 10 items in there, so we'll take off 11. There we go. You can see it's 55. So the problem was that it was adding up the table indexes. So because the table index is the um, position and not the value, it was adding those together. But if we now add it up, add up the C, and we run it again, it's 51, which is the correct um, value. So there we go, that's the first bug fixed. And you could see there was no error message there. 
So that's the sort of error where you just need to go through your code from the top and imagine that you're the script working it out. Okay. So what I did, I visualized what the numbers were going to be. I knew that n was going to be 1 uh, on the first go round, but on the second go round, it's the second index. So it's going to be 2, not 4. And that's what helps me work out the problem. Okay, the next piece of code is um, going to set the base plate color to purple and it's going to update the color property. So let's see if it works. And it set it to yellow. Let's just have a look at this color though and see if it's the actual color that we wanted. So I'm going to insert a frame or decal, it doesn't matter, just so I can check the color 3 value. So I wanted it to become purple, you see, but it's made it yellow instead. So what's gone wrong here? Because the color 3 value is purple, so it should be setting it to 98, 37, 209, but it's not working. So why is this? I've given it an RGB value, red, green, and blue, but it's not made it purple, it's made it yellow. So what's gone wrong here? Now, I don't know why this has happened, so I'm going to go and search it on the internet. So I'm going to go online, and I'm going to say um, color3.new giving wrong color. There we go. Color 3 not working. So let's check it out on the dev forum. Somebody else has already made a uh, report about this. Okay, so their code's a little bit different to mine, but they're trying to set the color 3 value. Let's have a look. Okay, color3.new expects the red, green, and blue values to be numbers between 0 and 1, instead of numbers being between 0 and 255, like color.fromRGB. Ah, okay, so if we wanted to use color3.new, we'd have to use three numbers between 0 and 1. But because we're using RGB values, we need to say color dot from RGB. Let's try that out. So we're going to go in here and we'll say color three, but we'll say dot from RGB. Okay, and now let's try it. Boom, there we go. Fixed another bug. And you can see, again, there was no um, errors in the output. And that's because it did what we told it to. It set the color to a color three value. It's just that we didn't supply it as a number from 0 to 1. So we gave the color3.new function the wrong values when we should have been using the color3.fromRGB function. And you can see how I went online and found the answer um, really, really quickly. If the first answer didn't work, then I would have gone to the next one. You can see we've got loads of different um, links here on Google. I would try each one until um, there, there comes a, a right answer and if there wasn't a right answer then I would post myself on one of these forums okay and the last one uh, we are creating a int value we're putting it in the workspace naming it cache and we're setting its value to 500 so if we load up the game it should be added yep there we go oh hold on there's an error uh, cache is not a valid member of workspace and it's on okay so it's told us the error and it says cache is not a valid member of workspace. That is saying that the that it thinks there's no value called cache in the workspace, even though there is. So this error is a bit vague, a bit confusing. We don't know what it means. And sometimes it can give you an error message that doesn't really help to fix your problem. And it's told us the time in which it happened. It even goes down to fractional seconds. And it says script. And it tells us the script. It's the one in server script service called script and it's on line 8 so let's just click it to go to the line so it's happening on this line so we're doing something wrong here uh, okay cool I see the problem so very very simple what we've done is we haven't specified the value property because we want to set the caches value property if I just insert an int value here to show you int value has a property called value and that stores the the, the number but instead of saying cache.value we've just had the the object itself we haven't told the property. So it's trying to change the cache object to be a number and we can't do that. So we need to say cache.value and you can see that the um, the error didn't tell us that um, that it was that you didn't it didn't say you forgot to say dot value on the end. It said a different error message which was a bit vague. And so this is why sometimes your error messages won't make sense because the script it can't work out 
what's wrong with your code. It's not that smart. So it just tells you where it went wrong. And when you see an error message, if it doesn't make sense, then it's likely that you've done something wrong on that on that line anyway. And it's something that you need to look into. So that's what I said when the error message can be vague. So now that we've fixed this bug, let's try again. Oh, hold on, we've got another one. Um, value is not a valid member of int value. Okay, so... Okay, I've seen what I've done. I forgot to put a capital letter for value. So again, really important that you get the spelling and the capital capitalization correct. So when you're saying a property name, such as value, you need a capital V. And uh, it again, it didn't say that you forgot a capital V. It's just said that value is not a valid member of int value, which means that there's no such property called value with a lowercase. So I knew straight away I'd forgotten the V for value. And that's just the sort of thing that will come with experience. Um, it might take somebody 10 minutes to work that one out, but for me, it only took me 20 seconds. That's because I've been doing a lot of debugging. I've been doing scripting for a while. So the more you do it, the better you'll become at it. And it's also a great way of solving, helping to um, improve your problem solving skills. So let's try it once more. And now you can see we've got, oh, I'll delete my old value that I was using as an example. We'll run the game and you can see the cache now has a value set at 500. So there we go. So now you can see some of the steps that I've taken when debugging my code. And as I said at the start, you're going to be debugging a lot when doing scripting because no programmer will go through their career without having bugs. It's how you decide to tackle these problems that will help you become a better programmer. Every developer will find bugs annoying and hard to fix, but the more you fix these bugs, the more you're building up your problem solving skills. And these skills are useful outside of coding as well. So you'll be glad in the end that you have had these bugs to provide challenges to you. I for one like bugs, that might come as unexpected, but I like them because they give you an extra challenge and the feeling when you finally fix one after a while is awesome and you never forget that feeling once you've fixed a bug, so it will motivate you to keep searching for your solution. As I've said, there's no such thing as an impossible bug, the answer is there somewhere, you've just got to look hard enough to locate it so that you can fix it. And the worst case scenario is that after a while, and I mean after a really good while of trying to fix it, not just after a couple of minutes, but after a couple of hours or days, after you've asked your friends or whatever, and that's usually when you have advanced code and really big code bases, bases, you have to rewrite that bit of code. It might be that you designed your code in a bad way, so that if you rewrite it and take other people's advice, then it will run better and become more reliable. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Roblox scripting videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, and all the best in fixing your bugs.